the Arab Springs yesterday. Today we're going to be looking at just Libya. Okay, and uh, remember yesterday we uh, talked about the assassination of Gaddafi. Okay, Gaddafi was the leader of Libya uh, up until 2000, 2011. Okay, uh, when he was assassinated. All right, and this creates um, this, you know, obviously space and position for power. Okay, so uh, this power vacuum is created because of this assassination. And then there's this fight for who is going to be the next leader of Libya. All right, and remember, Libya at the time, I mean, and still is not a democracy. So it's not like, you know, you're, you're voted into office. Um, it is normally who is the most powerful and who can, you know, basically gain the most allies to assert themselves as the leader of Libya. Um, so that's what we're going to look at today. All right. Now, before we get into that, all right, uh, we do have a new set of vocabulary terms. So I'm going to share my screen and show you how to get there. If you have forgotten how to get to vocab. Okay, so uh, all of us are going to go into Canvas, go into Week 7 Instructions. And then under Review Material, there is the Quizlet link to open up. I think there are 25 terms. Okay, this is a new set of vocabulary for you. Uh, you know, we've taken our Africa vocab quiz already. Okay. This is our new set of vocab terms. Okay. Some of these we've talked about, some of them we haven't. Um, so some of them are going to be brand new to you. All right. I don't care if you either scroll down through them with the term and definition. Some of them have images to go along with them, right? Or you just use the flashcards. Okay. And then you can just use the arrow keys to go through them. Okay, but I wanted for you to try to get through at least, you know, all of them. You may not remember each and every one of them, but at least be exposed to them. Okay. Uh, but I'm going to give you four or five minutes to get through those. Um, and then we'll move on to looking at just Libya. Okay. So uh, four or five minutes, go through your vocabulary, and then we'll come back and uh, continue talking about Libya. Just so that everyone's on the same page, uh, if you were not on for me to explain to you how to get to vocabulary, uh, if you go to Canvas, go into Modules, then select Week 7 Instructions, the Quizlet link will be right under Review, or right next to Review Material. Just click that, that'll open up here. Then you can go through either the flashcards or just scroll through the terms, reading the term and the definition. Um, you got about another minute. 
a minute and a half. Um, just try to get through those, you know, become a little bit more uh, familiar with it. All right, um, you can go ahead and exit out of Quizlet. Okay. Um, so just a little refresher, because I see a couple of you were not here yesterday, and you might be a little bit lost if I just pick up from where I left off. Um, so yesterday, talked about the Arab Springs. Okay, This started in 2011 and 2012, Okay, and this happened throughout the Middle East and Northern Africa, so the mainly Arab countries, hence the name, okay? But this event was the process of these Arab countries trying to reform their governments to become more democratic, okay? Um, you know, a lot of these countries um, are ruled partially by Islamic law, okay? And normally are a form of autocracy, where one person is in charge and, you know, it's normally someone who is extremely wealthy or someone who has a lot of military um, either experience or power. Okay. And, you know, the people that live in, in these countries in Northern Africa and the Middle East don't have a whole lot of, you know, voice in how their government is ran. So that is what the whole point of the Arab Springs is, is trying to get these governments to become more aware of what the people want, okay? And then acting on that, okay? Now, we're gonna look at the uh, country of Libya today. And I'm gonna share my screen and show you how to get to this stuff. Excuse me. All right, so if we go to modules, All right, and we're going to be looking at the Libya's transition to democracy assignment. Okay. Now, this is a discussion post, but it's really you're answering a couple questions because there are opinionated questions and then responding to someone. Okay. But before we get to that, you need to open up this PDF document. Okay. It's at the bottom of the explanation of, I guess, instructions okay, for your assignment. Okay. So if you click on these Libyan transition government current event, PDF, open that up. Okay, you have two things you're going to do before you complete your discussion post. All right, you got to watch a short video, okay, which we're going to do together and then talk about it. And then you're going to read a short current event article. It's about a page long. Okay, uh, not too bad. It is talking about uh, the GNA, which is the government that the United Nations supports, okay, who control Western Libya, all right, and kind of how they're going to operate and try to, you know, unify Libya. That's what this current event is all about, all right. But before we get to that part, um, we're going to watch um, a video over General Haftar, and General Haftar, remember, controls the eastern portion of Libya, okay. Remember, we got two different basically governments or powers, however you want to call it, trying to control Libya. So Libya is currently considered a failed state, but there is talks of possibly, you know, um, peace talks or the country working out a deal where Haftar and the GNA can work something out. Now, the issue with that is Haftar has you know, been known to be very unpredictable so we don't really know how this is all going to work itself out. So a lot of questions still to be answered, 
but let's go ahead and watch this short video on uh, Haftar and uh, his relations with Libya. So I'm going to do this. Come on, here we go. Let's talk about what's happening with the war in Libya. They've been fighting over the capital Tripoli since last April. And now world leaders in Berlin have promised to observe an existing arms embargo that was being ignored. But the permanent ceasefire deal they'd hoped for went nowhere. After Berlin, people will be watching what this renegade general does next. But who is Khalifa Haftar? And what is the battle for Tripoli all about? The fighting in Libya has been on and off ever since the Arab Spring uprising in 2011. Part of the problem was the killing of Muammar Gaddafi that year. Libya is a country full of different tribes and Gaddafi's strategy towards governing Libya for 40 years was to play those tribes off against one another. Once Gaddafi was out of the picture, the place became lawless. Tribes and militias that had fought together to overthrow Gaddafi turned against each other to fill the power vacuum created by his death. Fighting hasn't really stopped since, and if it did, it didn't for long. And right now, there's a battle for Libya's capital. The man who wants to take over is Khalifa Haftar. In the late 1960s, Haftar was Gaddafi's friend and helped put him in power. He became one of Libya's top military leaders. But in the late 80s, one of Haftar's missions in Chad went wrong. And long story short, he fell out with Gaddafi and ended up living in the U.S. for 20 years. He even became an American citizen. Haftar only came back to Libya once the Arab Spring hit. He eventually set himself up in the east and started consolidating power. With help from Egypt and the United Arab Emirates, he built what he called the Libyan National Army. It's estimated the LNA has at least 25,000 fighters. Khalifa Haftar's career, as we know him today, really began in July 2013. And his uh, premise was quite simple. What the Sisi was for Egypt, he was going to try and be in Libya. He realized that there was a need uh, for a classical, conventional, Arab Sunni military figure with, of course, it goes without saying, a notocratic um, slant to, to it all. One thing that's important in understanding Libya is that it has two rival administrations. Haftar and his forces back one of them, the House of Representatives based in the east in the city of Tobruk. The other is known as the Government of National Court. GNA works out of Tripoli and is recognized by the UN. It relies on what's left of Libya's formal military, as well as militias, to keep control. But some of Haftar's allies, like Egypt and the UAE, have a problem with the GNA, mainly its links to political Islam, including the Muslim Brotherhood. Because those ideological currents are seen as a threat to the regimes that decided to support Haftar in 2014. The problem that Haftar has with any government, whether it's above him or opposed to him, or one that has been appointed by him, is that he doesn't want to share power. Here's something else about Haftar. He's unpredictable. A year ago, it looked like peace talks were going somewhere and the UN and other world powers thought Haftar was on board. But in April 2019, just days before a UN peace conference on Libya, Haftar surprised everyone with an assault on Tripoli. Haftar's forces have been trying to seize the capital, Tripoli, from the UN-backed government. Since then, Haftar has been fighting militias loyal to the GNA. And now he's gotten new help from mercenaries, some of them from Russia. The battle has displaced thousands of people and more than 200 civilians have been killed. He promised at the time that he was going to be able to, in three days, enter Tripoli, uh, eradicate corruption, dismantle all the militias, top on the DNA. So it was a crazy adventure in the sense that uh, it was remarkably ambitious. Right now, world powers are trying to get the rival sides to agree to a ceasefire, but there are more countries involved in Libya than ever. On the GNA side, you've got the UN, Italy, Qatar, and Turkey, who 
whose parliament recently approved sending ground forces to Tripoli. Ülkenin meşru yönetimine ve Libya'daki kardeşlerimize saldırılarını sürdürmesi halinde darbeci Hafter'e hak ettiği dersi vermekten de asla geri durmayacağız. But Haftar has important friends too, like Egypt, France, Russia, Saudi Arabia, and the UAE. A lot of states have supported him, uh, mainly uh, the United Arab Emirates, who have uh, run a full-blown fleet of combat drones out of Libya with daily airstrikes, uh, which have turned out to be very destructive, but not very effective. And what are some of the things that world powers want? Well, countries like Turkey want the GNA to survive because, among other things, it wants drilling rights for oil and gas in the Mediterranean. Libya also has a lot of oil, and countries like Italy have oil companies in there they want to protect. Others say they're serious about stabilizing a country that's not had peace in far too long. And if you're wondering how bad it could get, Germany says Libya could become a second Syria. There we go. All right. Now, that last comment of Libya possibly becoming a Syria, you know, that's a that's a bold statement, but also a very frightening one. Like Syria, you know, basically still in the middle of a civil war, you know, um, still violence going on in the area. But, you know, their country has been just destroyed because of war, you know, uh, from battling sides. And that's because of foreign influence. Okay, from influences in Europe, from Russia, okay, um, even the United States. Okay, um, so it's not like you can just blame the country, uh, the people that live within the country. Okay, it is more than anything becoming a international conflict because you have all of these different countries wanting one side to become in power because that would benefit them in the long run financially. Okay. For Turkey, it is drilling rights because they have made deals with the GNA government that's supported by the United Nations. For Russia, it would mean access to um, energy deals um, that they could financially invest in. You know, so it's not like, you know, I hate saying this because it's kind of a pessimistic view, but it's not like these foreign countries have a concerted effort to help the people of Libya. No, they're, they're trying to help one side because they can financially gain from it. And that's the problem. And that's why this conflict is, you know, keeps going on and on and on because these outside influences, outside countries, you know, want to support one side for the wrong reasons. Okay. It's not for, helping the people. It's for financial gain for that particular country. Okay. Uh, so that's becoming an issue in every conflict throughout the world. It's not just Libya. Okay. Um, conflict normally is because of one or many or many issues. Okay. But that usually attracts outside support. Okay. One side, one country or another is going to support one side, one country or more is going to support the other. Okay. It's not like you normally just, you know, battle it out between two sides. Okay. You're going to have other factors that go into it. Okay. Now the issue that arises from this is, was it worth assassinating Gaddafi for Libya to be in this situation? You know, that's the big question. Okay, was it worth it? Okay, because right now, you know, you're in a failed state with violence going on throughout the country, open rebellion, you know, was it worth it to try to make the government more democratic? And that's a question I can't answer. You know, that's not my place to answer. But that is a question that many people have asked in Libya, you know, should we have taken part in the Arab Springs, should we have tried to reform our government? You know, that's a, that's a tough question to answer. Okay. Now let's, uh, let's talk about your assignment.
Okay, so if you still have your PDF open that you downloaded from Canvas, okay, this PDF down here at the bottom. Okay, we just watched the video. We've talked about it. Okay, uh, when I'm done explaining, all right, you're going to read this brief article. It's just over a page. Not too long of a read. Okay, once you've done that, I think this article talks about what the GNA, okay, the government that's supported by the United Nations, what their path to unity looks like, right? And you're going to use this information to help you answer this discussion post. Okay, so when you're ready for it, okay, you're going to come down here to reply. What I would do is just copy and paste the questions. So control C and then control V to paste it in your uh, reply box. Okay. Uh, number one, okay, this is what Libya's effort is all about, transitioning from a military dictatorship and an autocracy to a dem democracy. Sorry, that was hard for me to talk for some reason right now. Okay, so this is the reason for this question. What is the difference between the two? All right, and I would... I would look up the definitions, okay, just so that you're on the same page and make sure that you actually know the definition of each one, okay? And then you're going to tell me the difference between the two, okay? You does, it does not need to be in a complete sentence. I just want your uh, explanation of how they are different, okay? Then you're going to move on to number two. Do you think foreign countries should aid in overthrowing another country's leader? Explain why. This references Gaddafi's assassination, okay? Because NATO, okay, the North, North Atlantic Treaty Organization, which is, you know, Western countries in Europe and then also including Canada and the United States, right? This group helped assassinate Gaddafi, which then created this power vacuum and why we are in this situation today in Libya, all right? So... Uh, the important piece here is make sure you're explaining your opinion. Okay. Why do you think this? Okay. Either way, it doesn't matter to me on, do you think um, a country should help overthrow another country's leader? All right. You tell me. All right. But make sure you explain why. Number three, other than murder. Okay. We know that assassination is, you know, not the, not a moral thing to do. Okay, so why does assassinating a country's leader create more problems for the nation? Okay, so we've talked a lot about this, but why does, you know, all of a sudden a, a leader all of a sudden gone, what other problems does it create? Okay, and then number four, why do you think there are foreign countries sending their own troops and equipment into Libya? Okay, we talked about this a little bit after the video, but you have to put it in your own words. Okay. So what benefits do you think these countries have if they support one side in the conflict in Libya? Okay. So you answer those four questions and then you'll hit post reply. Once you posted, all right, then you will respond to a, another student's post. OK, what you're going to do okay, for two points. All right. You'll read their post and find one thing that you agree on or disagree on and respond on the differences or similarity. OK, so basically find something that you agree with or disagree with and then reply to that student. OK, be re be respectful, obviously, uh, but like be. Tell, tell me why, like solid statement that doesn't that's that doesn't tell me anything. Elizabeth says, I agree with what you said. What do you agree with? You know, be more specific. They're not going to get full credit for that uh, because they didn't, they weren't specific in what they were agreeing with. Okay. Um, do we have any questions on this assignment? Okay. If there are no questions, all right. Uh, I would complete this assignment. And then if you have extra time, I would check for any missing assignments and work on those. Uh, you do have quite a bit of time 
right? Because obviously we don't have to attend IPASS, all right? You have a lot of time to get some of these assignments done. So knock out this discussion post, respond to another student, and then check for any missing work that you can get completed. All right, that's kind of your, your uh, three tasks for today, all right? Uh, if you have questions, stay on and ask. If not, you are free to go, and I will see you next week.